Hello guys and welcome. Today I want to do some hangar talk. I have so much topics on my list. I had the tiny mini quad video that I want to do for some time now. I have FPV cams that should be reviewed. I have a new module for my fat jug. I have this fly sky radio which Hobby King sent me that should be reviewed. And I have a really powerful power mini quad that's insanely fast, uh, which you should expect in spectacular review and first flights video soon. And then there's this update for the Y4K, which is really awesome because it now is able to do 2.7K with 60 frames, which is really cool. And they, they just stepped up their game with a firmware update to, to be in the same region as the GoPro Hero 5. I mean, if they go ahead now and get out another firmware update where this this thing can listen to voice commands, <laughs> it would be it would be almost unfair. But yeah, uh, Yi, if you didn't think of this, uh, just just uh, implement voice commands and uh, some funny uh, cloud space to upload stuff. And this is uh, moving up from the GoPro 4 killer to the GoPro 5 killer. But uh, fun asides, uh, this is still uh, my best cam so far. Didn't have the chance to uh, test out the GoPro 5. I saw that uh, Steel tested the GoPro 5 and the Session 5 and it looks like he really likes the Session 5 and maybe to, to stay within the region of mini quads, maybe the Session 5 is, is the best option at the moment to, to have a cam on a mini quad. Of course uh, with $300 it's only for the pros. But yeah, also the pros crash. So it's an expensive hobby. The other option is to get cheaper cams like the M20 that I got. Uh, it's also in the in this in the size range of the of the GoPro session. It's a bit taller, but it's 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 yeah, it's a nice size. Also very, very lightweight, 54 grams, but it's just not the quality that the GoPro Hero 5 session has, of course. Here and I also ordered some funny looking antennas from IB Crazy, uh, should I say from Video Aerial Systems from Readymade RC. Uh, shipping was fast, it was expensive and I had to pay some customs, but here it seemed like the only way to get decent UHF antennas. This is the Moxon uh, rectangle antenna that goes on your UHF and should increase the range to about double the range, we'll see about this. And these are the semi-rigid uh, dipole antennas. They're not, not too expensive, they cost $15 each. So I got a few of them. You can use them on the, on the transmitter and on the receiver. I got this because lately I had some issues with Easy UHF in the mountains. I didn't have as much range as I want. And I, I really need this extra confidence. If you're up there in an area where you can't recover your quad if it crashes, you don't want to have RSSI warnings on your OSD. That's just a terrible thing to happen. So I got some extra antennas which I trust are good enough to eliminate this RSSI crap stuff happening in the air, which I don't want. Okay, so those were the antennas. Next on my list, I got the cheap, not real diversity, but antenna diversity Fat Shark module for my Dominator HD. It's the F it's the FSF2445, it's the version 2, version 1 had some issues. Uh, it has two antenna ports and they are really, really thoughtful on this. They have this 45 degree adapter for the little patch and the 90 degree adapter for your Omni. And this way you have super reception uh, straight in front of your goggles and you have a second antenna which gives you all-around coverage. 
to, to be honest, I still don't get the difference between antenna diversity and receiver diversity and what the disadvantage of this module is. But I don't expect this to be as good as this uh, LaForge or TrueD diversity thingies that you can install in the goggles. The LaForge look nice uh, and are super nerdy and may perform awesome, but you have to open your goggles and do some wiring and I didn't want to open the goggles. Most of the times I fly with the, with the FR632 anyways. This is my go-to diversity receiver. And I have helicals from Circle of Wireless, which seem to be one of the best. It was really super easy to install and I hope it has better reception than my old module. As I said, this 45 degree adapter here is just genius. And this way, if it faces straight in front of you, just have a good standing on your flight field and if the image gets bad, just turn your head and it really works better with this straight installation, I'd say. Next topic on my list, Runcam was nice enough to send me their new Runcam Eagle 16x9 cam and I also got the Foxier HS11, that sounds good, HS11-89. So that sounds like successor to the HS1177, which is the most popular, best performing CCD cam out there at the moment. So these are two uh, great new FPV cams that support 16x9. It should be a tremendous advantage for you if you have goggles that have 16x9 aspect ratio. If you don't have, uh, the Runcam Eagle also is available in this 4x3 form, form factor. And from what I've seen on other reviews, the Runcam really has awesome color set. It's really wide dynamic range. There are really advanced CMOS cams and they start to have advantages that CCDs can't give you, like super high resolution, super cool features. Yeah, we will see uh, what is the latency and how does it cope with fast light, light changes and so forth. So, that being said, on my Vortex I have the Runcam All Plus, but having flown the HS1177 on the same day with a GoPro, a GoPro 3 lens replacement, which Steel or originally Luke Bannister recommended, that's so much of a difference. So, the HS1177 with GoPro lens in it, just awesome, so cool picture. It's just not 100% sharp maybe, but yeah, light changes, lightning fast and yeah. I didn't notice the difference being so huge until I flew the same uh, the two quads uh, with different cams on the same on the same flight session. And I got a lot of comments of what I should have done in my run cam all review and what other things are interesting. So we'll collect all this information and hopefully do a comprehensive FPV cam review once again soon. But yeah, sorry that it takes time. Next topic on my list is the Tonigy i6s radio. Originally it looks like the Flysky i6s and I think it's the same. Hobby King sent me this. It seems like a really nice and affordable uh, and feature rich radio for the entry level. So if you don't want to spend the extra bucks, bucks to get this this here, the Taranis, you can, I think it's $60, but yeah, I will give you the price information in the info. This is really a nice radio. I mean, it has nice gimbals. Uh, it has a few switches. It should have six channels. Uh, I'm not sure about this, six or 10 channels. It has a little touch screen down there. Uh, it has no visible antenna and it's all in all it's really a tiny little radio compared to the Tyrannis. So it's really a backpack friendly radio. You get two receivers with it. Uh, one is a more conventional style uh, six channel receiver with normal PWM uh, servo connectors and two antennas. So this features antenna diversity which is super cool. And you get a smaller receiver which has a PPM uh, or SBUS output, which is a nice idea for the mini quads. So I think this is a dedicated mini quad radio. 
turn it on you have to press both power buttons and there is the startup routine where you have to have all switches up and the power down and then you can really scroll around in the menu do some settings I didn't find expo on this uh, only I think dual rates there are already reviews out of this thing from Ali Shanmao and from Painless360 so go ahead and check out their reviews now if you can't wait for it for what I use this the most it has an down there it has a micro USB connector at the bottom and you can definitely use it nice for liftoff or for other uh, FPV simulators so this is my go-to radio to fly FPV simulators it uses four normal AA batteries I have the inner loops in there yeah and it's just really convenient to use it as a I mean it has some gimbal sliders up there and have buttons it also has telemetry as I understood this which is nice for such a cheap radio and maybe I will try to bind this to my to my Quantum Nova Pro because this radio looks way better than the original Quantum radio and it would be a, a good use so nice radio nice ideas okay last but not least topic on my list for this hangar talk today is this now, I don't want to show it in full size yet. This little power quad over there. I'm gonna do a full review of this soon. And I want to also introduce you the guy who invented this frame. And I have a lot to say about this quad. Just at the moment, believe me, this is the most powerful quad I've had so far. And this is insane. I mean, the the motors here, ZMX V3, I got it from Silver Drone. These motors have 1.4 kilograms of thrust each. <laughs> you can add this or you can multiply this by four and you get to over five kilograms of thrust. And the quad only has about 600 grams, so almost one to 10 weight to thrust ratio, which is insane. Uh, the batteries don't last long on this, and but it ascends like a rocket. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really, it's crazy. Uh, I will do a full review on this, of course, really, really soon, and I want to do more acro flying with this. It's really fun to have some hang time in the air. Hang time means if you fly fast up and can fly inverted, and it should be nearly indestructible. And yeah, its name is Rampage and yeah that's what it's all about and i will use my m20 because this is such a small quad and i want to keep the weight down and the m20 really works nice for this kind of quad what i'm super excited to talk about now is two great drones that have been released so close to each other firstly we were patiently waiting for gopro to release their karma and Initially, it looked on the leaked images, it looked like a um, Hexa Quad Karma drone style thingy. It was supposed to be out in January or February or early 2016, which didn't happen, and everyone was sad at GoPro. And the, yeah, then they uh, released the Karma, and it really looks like a nice concept. And it has the Hero 5 included, and it has a super handheld gimbal for you it's a really cool package but is it of good as a drone as it wants to be we don't know and uh, gopro just started with their drone enthusiasm so we will see how good it's really and then uh, i mean dji is really <laughs> that's all yeah it's it's a war it's a jungle out there uh, they they released their mavic drone a few days after gopro and just devastatingly good reviews on this thing. Uh, initially the Mavic had uh, blurred images from KC. I'm, I mean, I can out myself now as uh, one of the biggest KC Neistat fans because yeah, this guy is crazy and yeah, just check out his channel if you didn't. Uh, and uh, KC Neistat, if you watch this, uh, I did a shout out to you. Now it's time to do a round and you know. <laughs> um, 
Casey didn't have the focus sharp on the Mavic. Um, so initially it looked like the trade-off for having such a really tiny drone is that you have less qual lesser quality than the Phantom 4. But on later shots, and I liked the review that I saw on from iPhone Edo or iPhone Edo, the guy from what looks like California, and it showed that you just have to use a focus. You have to focus, uh, and this is uh, something that is new with with such drones because most of the cams use fixed focus, and the Mavic doesn't. And if used not correctly, it can give you unsharp images, blurred images. So the images of the Mavic look really cool and all the other specs are just breathtaking. I mean, don't believe there are 27 minutes of flying time. I would, I would think rather 20 minutes, but 20 minutes is awesome. I flew my Phantom 2 the other day and I fly there for like 12 or 14 minutes with the battery and it really feels extra long for me. I mean, I'm used to flying mini quads with two to four minutes so 15 minutes or 20 minutes, it's, it's awesome long. And if you have two or three batteries, it's, it's really, you can fly for an hour of continuous, almost continuous flight time. That's insane and don't, don't, uh, don't look for quads that say they can fly 30 or 40 minutes. That's just, no, you don't need it. So really excited to see the Mavic in action and I already ordered some. And of course I'll, I'll do a full review it will be the last review to come out. Uh, after all, big names and YouTube got it sent really early. But you will get an honest review from me. And if you're a subscriber, you know me and you maybe value my opinion on this. So we will see how the Mavic looks in my hangar. Okay, so I hope to also get my hands on the GoPro Karma. It will depend on how well GoPro trusts my channel and, and send me a review sample. I think GoPro Karma vs Mavic, there are so many videos out there. It's really, GoPro is a complete package of a good action camera, of a really good handheld gimbal, and it can fly on a drone. And the Mavic is just the best little drone out there at the moment. So it's if you just need a drone, get the Mavic. If you also need the GoPro and the handheld gimbal for action shots and for something other than flying, then the Karma may be better. That's the shortest Mavic versus Karma thing I can do at the moment. And yeah, it's really not much more to say about this. Okay, so thanks for watching this longer episode. I hope I have covered all the things I wanted to cover. I hope it wasn't too boring. Uh, comment, feedback, welcome as always. Tell other people about my channel. Visit my Facebook page. I want to give out news on Facebook uh, as I read them. I want to post stuff like this, but I only get like thousand, thousand followers on, on Facebook. I want to bump this up. Come on guys, check out Facebook. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. Bye.